CBS and guys out there, uh, strange Star Trek, strange new worlds. Welcome to our review for it. The 17th uh, Star Trek show on Paramount Plus. Oh, shit. Is <laughs> no, it? Is it? Yeah, probably. <laughs> Uh, guys, this is the show that's supposed to appeal to us, uh, appeal to Star Trek fans, and give it another shot. Uh, you know, the, the whole concept, strange new worlds, right? Episodic, maybe visiting planets and, and doing what Star Trek does best. Well, uh, you know, after the fucking travesty of Star Trek Picard, I had zero motherfucking faith in this. Initially, I did. I kept saying, got to be different writers, not different writers. In fact, this one uh, was directed by Goldsman himself. Uh, and you got the same executive producers. Did they fuck it up? No. Everything was better than Picard. Everything in here was a hundred times better than Picard or Discovery. The writing was better. The acting was better. The characters were better. Uh, the science, you know, the, of course, it's, not, you know, sci-fi, right? But it, it tried to make sense. The details of it, the story, the pacing was better. The direction was better. Uh, look at what happens when you fucking develop your characters and you don't cut away every five seconds to some goddamn <laughs> subplot that nobody fucking cares about. They stuck with the fucking crew. And when the and captain would go mission. off and do his own thing, the crew left on the ship would support their captain and help when things are going wrong on the planet. They help. And it was awesome. It was awesome, guys. What the fuck? And honestly, you know, I know... <laughs> I get it. It's fun when we fucking, you know, shit on the fucking things that we watch, right? And there was a part of me that was like, <laughs> boy, I sure do. <laughs> you know, it's that morbid train wreck that you kind of want to see. How, how fucking bad can you do this? But you know what? I'm glad that they didn't fuck it up. This is Star Trek. This is fucking Star Trek. Sure, there was a lack of action. I'll, I'll say that. But guess what? That doesn't matter need. in Star Trek. Yeah, like, you, you don't, don't need explosions to solve every fucking problem. In fact, solving problems with explosions is a last resort in Star Trek. They'll do it if it needs to be done. But it is, this is, was fucking awesome. I thought it was extremely well done. And I, I, I appreciated it. Um, is it perfect? No, they kind of tie in some, some elements. I think people who haven't seen Discovery, because this is the Captain Pike that carries over, he, he's carrying baggage with him from episodes in Star Trek Discovery. And if you haven't seen it, you're like, what, what's going on here? Why is he, he's kind of like a tortured captain kind of thing. Uh, so, you know, th those kind of episodes, um, mm, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. But damn, man, this is what I was hoping for. And I hope this is episodic. I don't really know. We've only seen one episode. And also, who knows what we're going to get from here, right? Picard started. But honestly, this was better than even Star Trek Picard Episode 1 when it was, oh, okay, I like this. No, this I like even better than that. So, all right. That's my take. Let's hear from uh, Joe. I haven't seen a lot of Star Trek. This is, okay, let me I just say this real quick. Couple episodes, okay, you and, have? Yeah, I have This seen is what episodes. I was hoping for here. <laughs> this one actually did feel like, okay, this is better this is what i actually was looking for right, yeah, as yeah, opposed yeah. to the other fucking <laughs> shit this had everything i did like the new characters new characters for me right but they are based on the old ones yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, i did like how they uh Enterprise. resolved the problem mm -hmm. everybody was on board nobody was fucking doing dumb shit <laughs> right no. The writing was stronger. Like there's not not. It not was better. Yeah, MacGuffin. the writing was better. You didn't have these quick cuts. No, like these dumbass edits. Yeah. And none of this like what the fuck moments. Yeah. It's like everything was like okay, this is what we got to do. Everything was going according to plan. This is a little hiccups. It's like okay, cool. This is uh, pretty interesting. I could see some of the old episodes. It brings me back to watching yeah. some of the old stuff. Yeah, and, and to be perfectly honest, it's not... I mean, this isn't one of the better episodes of Star Trek. There, I mean, you have to get into a season, and then some of these episodes <laughs> get really high. So it's not amongst the best episodes of Star Trek. But I guess I'm grading on a curve here because of how fucking Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too. It's like, I don't know if I'm been. just like... Uh, 
liking this one way better because right. of uh, what we saw what before. Seen, yeah. But when I think of Star Trek, I think of like researching, exploring, uh, visiting new planets, yeah. uh, encountering people, and even the not, opening not, credits. Not really fighting, just like doing politics and being yeah. like a reasonable shit like that. Yeah, I love the that's opening what I, credits. That's what I was expecting. It's like the classic line, fucking, you know, exploring space, and and these are the voyages. It was. It was a breath of fresh air, and you know what? It's a fucking solid ass start. Even the intro, the intro was way better. Now, I the intro. What does uh, Captain Alex think? It was, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it is not excellent Yay! TV. There are all sorts of stupid shit that also Yay! has in there. And if I was gonna nitpick I every think. TNG episode, <laughs> I'd find things to nitpick in there too. Um, look, we even got even these fucking idiots, we got them that. They had a formula that has existed since the uh, 70s. Yep. Uh, all they had to do, turns out, <laughs> was follow the established formula that was already done for them, yeah. emulate writers that are better and smarter than them, mm -hmm. and they would come out with a product that is infinitely better yep. than the shit that they've been putting out. I don't watch any Discovery. Uh, I can just... No, I'm going to guess. I I'm going to guess that this one. is the best piece of new track I've seen that has movie. ever been made by yes. the Alex, under the Alex Kurtzman idiot umbrella. Yes. So, yes. It, it look, it, it worked. I think that there's a balance issue. Um, I think that they went really, really heavy with crew exposition. I think that if we start with Pike, do a little... I like the, the backstory of Pike, and then we do conflict. And then maybe the next episode, we do the backstory of Spock yep. and do a little bit of... and do. But they try to focus on, like, three characters here, mm -hmm. and they really kind of took away from the problem of the week because I felt we kind of rushed through the problem of the week and it's a really interesting problem. Yeah. I would have loved to see them actually play a little bit more with it. Yeah. Didn't need any of the Spock shit in this episode. It wasn't pressing. Didn't need to be in this one. The first mate stuff didn't need to be in this one but solid <clears throat> start. Yeah, I'm happy to hear it. Uh, you know, and it's not that don't don't think. Oh God, I don't think there's any Picard defenders. But they're like, <laughs> oh, well, just because it's the formula. When you so you saying you can't do Star Trek with doing that? The, the, you have to do Star Trek the exact same way. No, you're and in fact, you can do something. But the writers with Star Trek Picard do not have the skill level yeah. to pull off something different, right? They have the skill level apparently to pull this off. So I'm I'm happy to see that. Um, so actually, I like the stuff with number <laughs> one, uh, this new number one, uh, and and it's cool to see the Spock. So I think when you're not constantly, you know, cutting the way to team, you know, fucking subplots that nobody gives a shit about, and you're focusing on all the crew members, uh, it it really really works, and this is uh, great. So, um, fuck, fuck yeah, I love this captain. This actor's nailing Captain Pike. I freaking like it. Uh, and I, I think the, the I, I, it was a little awkward though to see here. Maybe we'll not do spoilers in this first episode. We'll talk about spoilers in a second. There is a cameo at the end that I'm like, what? Why? Why do we? No, man, just no. Just we're, let's focus on this. The early days of the Enterprise, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and they had the fucking shot from the movies when Enterprise is in dry dock and he's coming around in a shuttle. And they got the music. And it's just like, yeah, here we go, man. We're going. Nostalgia. to Explore. <laughs> we're gonna do the thing. Yeah, nostalgia in there. I just loved it. Let's do final verdicts and then we'll go talk into the nitty gritty spoilers. Final verdicts. After coming from Picard. Um, Come on, oh, man. Let's be let's be let's be nice. This was this was awesome. We gotta we gotta be. No, yeah, no. That's what I'm CBS. saying. Like, I don't know if it's just like this is the right like way. I did, like, uh, this is a fucking eight compared to like, yes, what sir. I've seen before. Yes, sir. I did enjoy this one. I hope it continues to be like this amazing. Yeah. But episodic. I don't want it to stick to just right. one thing. And then yeah. if because if you stick to one issue the entire season, I'm I don't like what the fuck you're doing. I'm not along the for the whole ride. fucking season ruined. For yeah, ride. like uh, uh, Picard's trauma <laughs> with his <Yes>. mother <laughs> handled in the most insulting way. It's like, Mama look, drama. take baby steps. The writers just mm -hmm. take piece by piece. Mm -hmm. You don't need to fucking swallow a whole ass thing. Right. So mm. some That's stories are great. The job. Some. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. What about you, Alex? Uh, I can, I can. If we're grading on the the new Trek curve, I think this is a Let's solid do a new eight. Trek curve. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, it, I think it is an eight. Um, I think this is a. So, I think a lot of my criticisms of this specific episode will actually just naturally go away because we stop. We will. St 
as long as we keep the the formula going. Yeah. Um, we're not going to get nothing but backstories from, from, from a bunch of different characters. We can focus on the real, actual, interesting problem, and they can actually kind of chew on those things for long periods of time. Yeah. So I think this is solid. It's a it's it's surprising. Um, yeah. Now we have been fooled before. Yes, we have. Um, I will admit. <laughs> It can get. It can go very poorly. Rip now, these off. Uh, the the people who are. Uh, if it happens, Joe. If for fucking some reason the Borgordi, the Borgotti, George do shows not, up in this fucking universe, not. I'm ripping this shit off immediately. Yeah. The fuck out of here. Uh, this was also written, directed, and produced by the people. None of the subwriters, right? All of the main people are doing this specific episode. Now, I'm curious to see who writes and directs yes. to, through, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. it is, because I have a sneaking suspicion that Goldstein isn't going to direct every episode, right. that he's not going to be the head writer on all of these, and they're going to start handing it off to right. you know the people swallowing crayons in the writer's room, and <laughs> um, that's what we're going we're to end up with, uh, Tribbles, but dumb. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. I agree uh, wholeheartedly. I'm very happy. We are in agreement at an 8 out of 10. For now. I think it's a fucking solid-ass episode for now. <laughs> well, I had hope for this one because it's like this is what I wanted from it. I wanted it to f do this, and they did it. And they didn't fuck it up in episode oh, it's one. It's the title, Strange New Worlds. You don't give me fucking Strange New Worlds. If you fuck you this doing? up, <laughs> you dumb motherfucker, right? It's like we only live yeah, I thought it was a perfect episode. It's a a little weak bits here and there, but you know, for me, this is what Star Trek is. And if I were to show somebody, you know, Star Trek, I'd probably start them off with TNG. But you know, if if they're like, no, I'm only interested in content that's produced, you know, in the last five years or yeah, something. Stop talking like to that, that person. Yeah, it's bad to talk to that person. But Curtis if you're in, then 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 I'll do this. But if Star Trek needs to continue on, then then this is what I think will. Uh, can result in some interesting stories. What's the timeline again? <coughs> From the, Picard and this? This is the, uh, the continue. 40, See, I don't fucking know, Joe. 40, this is Discovery before. timeline season two, and then Discovery gets launched into the far future, so they're no longer in the timeline, and and but Captain Pike still is. 20 years after this show, so. the original 20-ish years, the original Star Trek will happen, and yeah. then twenty years after that, yeah. TNG will right. happen. So and this is this is Deep like Space Nine, a couple generations Voyager. before the, okay. the next generation. Okay, <laughs> okay. So um, let's do our spoiler section. Uh, so solid, uh, and I'm happy, and I think Star Trek fans can. Uh, maybe potentially be uh, happy again or excited about what's coming up, and we shall see. We shall see how it works out from here. Um, but, man, that stink of Picard is still in the goddamn room, man. And then season three. It's canon, too, remember. Oh, dude, it's forever no, it's there. Not. Uh, no. Forever there. <laughs> forever. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the spoiler section. Hey guys, welcome to the spoiler section. So we'll do a little bit of an episode breakdown here. When they do well, we want to encourage it. Um, we so start off, we're in Ma Montana. You no, know, we start off with first contact from an alien point oh, of view, right. which I thought was really cool. Uh, and they kind of make it look like it's Earth, and then we're we're seeing some aliens for the first time. But no, it's like this is interesting. Okay, so civilizations meeting a federation ship, and they're like, "What the fuck is going on here?" They're freaking out. It's cool. Then we go to Montana, Bear Creek, Montana. In fact, oh, you know, he's he's a man's man, Joe. Got the bearded look. I like the bearded looks. He looks good with a beard, and you know, he's like riding a fucking. Horse out, yeah. You got technology. He's everywhere. got a but naked lady in his bed. He's making her pancakes. Yeah, pancakes. Looking, yeah, making her pancakes, and that man knows how to cook. And he's riding a fucking horse with his shirt off. No, he, he, <laughs> he, he had too shirt. cold for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's the morning after, Captain. Yeah, dude's a man, man. Anyways, um, he gets a call. Uh, number one is uh, I don't know if this may this girl might show up in the future. So she's just a fellow captain, and she's like, you know what? You've been avoiding uh, Starfleet. You've been avoiding your communicator. Uh, he's like, "Oh, you, I'll see you next Monday." And she's like, "I'd like that, but I hope not, because you have better things to do. You know, you you're, you do something. You're an awesome guy, and do something, and poke him, do something." 
And uh, so he's ignoring Starfleet, and uh, Starfleet gets sick of that, and we get cool visuals of a fucking Starfleet fucking shuttle in front of a horse. It's like interesting visuals. Nice. You should just um, transport him out of his fucking house. Yeah, Look, no. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so number one is in trouble. Romeco Romaine is in trouble, and he's like, well, that's my number one. I got to go. I got to save her. Fine. Fuck it. I'll get the old crew back together. Um, then we do the credit sequence. This credit sequence, I like it. I like it better than Picard. This is how you do a credit sequence. It's better than Picard. It's better than Discovery. It's even better than Enterprise. Uh, that That's where it stops. Yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> the other ones are still so. Original Trek better. Uh, TNG better. DS9 better. Voyager be better. Yeah. Uh, but this one does get it right, and I like it. Um, here we go. So, uh, I did notice directed by Goldsman. I'm like, oh, no, here we go. Surprisingly, he didn't fuck it up here. He turned off that stupid fucking brain and turned on this brain, I guess. Uh, we start with Vulcan, uh, and we see Spock. And apparently, he's getting married. I never knew that Spock would got married. I guess I fucking forgot. Uh, well, he gets proposed to. It's not Spock proposing to her. It's her proposing to Spock, and they're they're doing the Vulcan talking. And I, I you know, the logical. I like the way they talk. <laughs> and uh, you know, they even show outward uh, like affection where they kiss, and, and the waiter comes over here. Uh, I'm gonna have to ask cut you this to, shit out. I'm gonna have to ask you to stop doing that. Take Listen, that half breed, take, take this shit to take the corner. Take that somewhere else. Like, oh, we will. Oh, that's a great and then idea. They go down Excellent to nitty idea. gritty. <laughs> yeah, and then Spock has sex with his. Uh, uh, no, he's interrupted. <laughs> no, actually, he doesn't have sex. Uh, Chris interrupts him uh, before doing so, and his duty <laughs> calls him away uh, before he gets to have sex and marry her. I guess so. That's why I didn't know that Spock had the wife or not. Uh, but she's gonna. Uh, and I thought to myself, she's gonna die for sure in this show, isn't she? You know, if they're doing the whole fucking, I don't know if they're doing episodic or if they're doing the whole fucking series plot line, one baddie at the end for everything. I hope not. Uh, but if so, then they're probably going to rope her in and kill her off because I've not heard of her before. Anyways, um, I just love that we get that shuttle scene flying around the Enterprise. That reminds me of one of the movies from Kirk uh, doing that. And uh, we get it in dry dock. We've seen it several times in the films, actually, and, and even in the uh, television series. Uh, but I don't really like the 80s uh, shoulder pads on the uniform. I'm not really a fan of the, the fake, the fakeness of that. I didn't mind it. I, I yeah. kind of did enjoy it. It's like, eh, a little throwback. I'm just, fuck, I'm just throwing little out my throwback. thoughts on every guy. <laughs> yeah, but see, your shoulders look good. Fine there. Thanks. I've been um, working out. Yeah, you have been. <laughs> <laughs> like, but the, the, they got the fake shoulders there, and um, and then he mentions uh, Spock, uh, who we meet. Uh, he mentions the loss of his sister. He's always mentioning Discovery, tying those things together. I'm like, no, please, please don't. Because initially, guys, I will admit, I like Discovery. I'd like <laughs> season some one good of Discovery. On that. I did, and then season two, I liked a little bit, and I was like, okay, and then. And then we started fucking it up with this whole Red Angel storyline and then season three. And I eventually went back and watched season three and then season four. And I'm Why like, would you do I'm like this isn't as bad as Picard, but <laughs> it's just not it, it, it's it's not good. It's not sometimes they can reach. All right. Um, and so but this this is better. Anyway, uh, I just didn't want him to. Uh, don't you don't need to mention. It. Hopefully, <laughs> that'll be the only time it gets mentioned. His sister is uh, fucking Michael Burnham, and no. Um, <clears throat> what else? Well, um, the uh, Ortega. Uh, so we come to the bridge crew. We okay, see all of his all crew. The introduction. Yeah, mm -hmm. we get. Uh, so I had to know. Uh, like, are these all the people we're gonna see from now on, or you know, are they like? cameos from people because in the old shows like you would see people and then you'd never see them again uh so assuming that these are the crew it, there is a lot of women on the uh the bridge it's him and then just nothing but women there's like one guy and it's him and spock um and i thought oh maybe that's they're they're, they're kind of doing the reverse of the uh the original series because the original series was all dudes though they did have number one number one was you know his uh, second in charge and she was a woman uh, so they're probably doing the reverse of that, but it's probably not all the crew that we haven't met yet. So anyways, um, but Ortega is, I think, uh, Helmsman, maybe, uh, or maybe, yeah, Helmsman. Yeah. And I just, she's got the edgy haircut thing, and I'm like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to do some of this. Um, 
suspect on Ortega might might like or might not. She didn't have a whole lot here. Do I do like Ahura, uh, this young prodigy? She nails her role like uh, Ahura here, um, and I like the fact that the crews all meet in each other. You is know, that some the new of them one? No, Ahura is the the communications officer. Oh, her. Okay. And you know her from the originals. She was, you know, African American, and on the show, you, ca uh, you know, they they had them kiss. It was. Maybe not the first interracial kiss, but one of it amongst the, the first, first interracial kiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, they, they were... Star Trek has always been progressive like that. Anyways, uh, Captain uh, um, Pike is showed uh, to be a little haunted uh, by his fate. And you... I don't think you know his fate, but me and Alex know his fate even past what happens. He gets burnt. But do you know his fate? He yeah. <laughs> I just, I just saw he, it. <laughs> he get a, eventually is in this little unit that goes beep, beep, beep. You know, he answers one beep for yes or two beeps for no, something like that, because he's horribly burned. And so, you know, fucking, it's, it's sad how that is. But he does get a different ending than that in the uh, TNG. So I hope this, this series eventually, I don't know how many seasons they plan to do, but it will go into TNG. Um, and then what? <clears throat> they show off all parts of the ship as they do the intercom. And it seems like the budget is big. They're actually showing the engine room, the 10 forward kind of thing, bar. And I'm just remembering when they hid parts of the ship in the movies, like the Kelvin universe, like they had to film like in a beer factory for the engine room. And then they that beer factory burned down or something or wasn't available. So they could never show the <laughs> engine room and the ship again in any of the future movies. But here it seems like they got the budget. So I'm, I'm happy. But eventually, uh, once the crew all gets to it gets together, what what happens, Alex? <clears throat> oh, they go to explore. They go to the planet because the planet <laughs> has a warp signature, but it's not a warp drive. Yeah, it is a different kind of signature, and they theorize that it is a warp bomb. bomb, bomb and this bomb, is where bomb, the bomb, previous bomb. ship had gone. It had only has like one nacelle. Yeah, so there's only three people on the ship at the time, and they're all there's no bodies on the ship. The ship is completely derelict. And uh, they need to go explore. Um, and it's, it doesn't make sense because this planet is centuries away from creating a warp drive. Uh, and so they, they need yeah. to go down and figure it but out. But uh, initially, the new number one suggests raising shields. Yeah. And everybody's like, why, why would we raise shields? Off. You in area? No, but it turns out she was right. Here comes some fucking incoming fire from the planet uh, after they scanned it. And uh, yeah, they're, it's like, what the fuck is going on here? They're, well, they're building a warp bomb. And then we get a discussion of General Order 1. As we know it in TNG, it's called the Prime Directive, but this was before it was called the Prime Directive, General yeah. Order 1, which states what? Don't fuck with shit. Correct. <laughs> don't fuck don't with fuck shit. Don't fuck with if shit. If they don't have They're warp primitive, tech... Leave them the leave fuck them, alone. Don't, don't fuck with their shit. <clears throat> and uh, so this kind of, they're like, fuck. Uh, well, do we, do we fuck with their shit? Well... It appear this is odd because they, they have um, tech. This is a unique situation. So he actually goes to Doctor uh, Mbanga, uh, Doctor Mbanga, who it's it's not Bones yet. There was a doctor on the ship before Bones comes. Bones is uh, the doctor for for Captain Kirk. So this guy's pretty cool. Um, got a thick accent. I was having trouble sort of hearing him at first, but then I got used to it. Um, and he uh, basically in his ready room or not ready room, but uh, 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 lab. Fucking hospital lab thing. He's working with a geneticist or uh, mm -hmm. some kind of a other doctor to blend uh, DNA and and kind of disguise. She themselves. makes disguises. She makes disguises. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're gonna simplify everything. All right. Yeah. No. Well, it's it's genius. Can't fight. I, I like it, except like for it. the inclusion of Spock doesn't make any sense. But yeah, you're correct. The like inclusion it. of Spock. The, they're like, oh, his DNA is a hybrid DNA. It makes it super hard. It's like, all right, they don't oh, fucking yeah, break him. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know why they had to do that. That's uh, it. I was like, uh, yeah. Kurtzman is in the room. <laughs> and what? Yeah, uh, Spock. <laughs> but you know, and so af and, and then this this doctor, she, I like her. You know, she's in this white uniform. Kind of reminds me of Her bubbly. Um, yeah, bubbly. But but uh, God damn, it was the Genesis Project. Everybody was wearing white in that in one of the movies. But and and I wrote here in one episode, I care more about this crew than Picard. You know, yeah. and it's crazy. It, it, it's really crazy. And and they're just now starting to be developed. Initially, I didn't like this new number one. I'm like. Eh, Noonie and I, I want, She's I want. a little yeah, too Noonie cocky. Sin. Well, that doesn't make sense. Why is she called Noonie and Sin? Yeah, where, is it con-related or is it not con-related? Con I don't know what's happening here, so it's, i got to look that up. But anyways, um, what, what, 
But what wonders it does, uh, you know, to not do these cutaway jumps and to fucking juggle like so many different subplots of unrelated things to discover how are they related it's like no we have a problem here let's fucking solve it this is actual character development um we get some jokes too they throw some jokes like hey, captain where are my pants <laughs> you know it's like he's like, beams down and it's like well some of these guys wear shorts so you're, you're wearing he's, shorts well, i guess it's because he was all tatted on the side well, that's the, 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 that's the, the alien, that's the alien, alien one? Skin, okay yeah. Um, and so the shape and here, okay, let's, let's address this. So they are still doing social commentary, but that has always happened. Social and political commentary that has always been in Star Trek. And this is what I'm talking about. I'm a fucking progressive Star Trek's left leaning and here it's there. They literally ha talk about the old, this is, this place is like the shades of old earth. You know, this is how co Trek commentates on social issues in smart ways, allegory, these kinds of things. But in this instance, um, they're a little more direct with they're it. They're very on the nose. It is not, I wouldn't say it's ham fisted. It's close to ham fisted. But it's fucking close. It's this, close. They do not, you need a fucking scalpel to do this in a way where you're almost tricking people along the way. Yeah. And they don't have the ability to do it, but I still think that this is within my personal, yeah. you know, bubble of like, it, this it's is It's on the edge, but if you're, say, conservative, then you're like, motherfucker, did I just see a goddamn Trump sign? Fuck y'all, I'm not listening. You know what I mean? <laughs> right? That's, that's, but you, you want to avoid that because you want to include both sides in the conversation. And then, mm -hmm. honestly, most of the time, you, conservatives that. agree That's with the resolution in Star Trek. Conservatives are just fucking progressives. They don't fucking realize it yet. Um, anyways, so, uh, but here it's like, it's like, oh, shit, are they going to do, it's Goldsman, it's Kurtzman. And I think that they were, uh, they had an opportunity to fuck it up. And I don't think they fucked it up. But I, I like a little bit more allegory. Anyway. So uh, they beam up two of the civvies because uh, they get into a little cu uh, cur cuffle, what a fight or something, right? Wh why did they? They needed their guys? badges and they and needed their, their DNA and their, and their eyes. eyes. Oh, that's right. And they're not <laughs> guarded by anyone. And this is a part of the show that absolutely didn't work. And I was horrified that this was how it was going to go. Straight a guy gets back. up and then just runs through the fucking Enterprise. Oh, oh I liked it. You like that there's a guy yeah. that the Enterprise oh, is obviously such Obviously, the door should be locked. That's a Halo situation where the lady is in the fucking... Yeah, like the door should be locked. And you can get into an elevator <laughs> oh, and, like, shit. there's no security staff and, like, the, the doctors are incompetent. It's like, yeah. uh-oh. But uh, it leads to... And, and silly stuff like that is having the original series. I love that TNG. I love it that has easily. happened, but... Sp uh, Spock needs a booster. And so they're trying to get these people to, you know, get the uh, matches of the match. And Ahura has a great scene. She relates with the scared dude by, you know, using something from their culture. Tag you can tell oh, she you takes like her job ball. seriously. You know what I mean? Uh, like Rafi would have just turned and punched the guy out or said or t told her how much better her relationship is than his relationship with his fucking friend. No. <laughs> Also, you want some crack? <laughs> I don't know. Or, yeah. Does she do crack on Earth and she's mad at Picard for being richer than she is in the future where there's, there's no, no money. currency? God damn it. Fucking, you know, this is how it's done. And Uhura can say, she's fucking smart. She's studying. She's going on a mission. So, obviously, she's going to research this culture. She bonds with him over a fucking football, basically. Yeah. And, you know, or their it's version like that of was football. the best match. Yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. And basically, and it, so oh, he gets like, involved right, talking, cool. so he gets knocked out clever clever and makes me like her yeah. um the crew is just in time to fix spot deterioration of course a little bit of a force drum there to, to get the but you gotta have some interesting things i like problems coming up crew solving it boom yep. just in time bam uh they they did say something that i didn't quite catch we can't beam that down Transporters don't work that way, but you I'm like, can't but beam I'm, the juice inside like, of his body. About? So they have a vial okay. filled with juice, mm -hmm. and they need the juice to get inside of his body to meld with his genes. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, I "This is not that. how the science works." And Kurtz was like, <laughs> "Well, make it the science <laughs> work." Oh, okay, and so fine. they beam the juice inside of Spock's body, and it binds with him, and then it's instantly, and then his fine. Like, yes, I like it. Um. <laughs> Whatever. Um, these are the, the kinds of things. Listen, Alex. Wait, Alex. A minute, Alex. <laughs> wait a minute, Alex. Wait a minute. Because things are going, this is the allowances that you have. Yes. If you're having a good time, you oh, are. I get it. I get it. But when greatest. this happens, it's such a Picard. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> no, it's like by no. the 17th time, you look good. You're right out there with a pickaxe yeah. in front of all this <laughs> militia. <laughs> yeah. 
30 fucking boards Let's shooting go. machines. <laughs> I'm just being fair. These are no, you these, are. these not, are these I'm are things that out. like honestly, no, if you yeah, improve yeah. on these things, we can start talking about 9 yeah, and 10 out of 10. Exactly. But they <laughs> we don't need it. Yeah, uh <laughs> Rebecca was ca- Yes. So Rebecca remains uh, number 1 was captured. They get into the prison and she's like, "Oh, quite a look, captain," cuz they're all, you know, in the alien form and uh, you know, they are revealed uh, when unfortunately Spock screams. Because uh, he's like, Captain, I am in a lot of pain. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> so I liked it. It should have been a little funnier than it was, but I did like it. Uh, it was funny to me. And then he kind of turns back into his normal, and they're like, oh, fuck. And so they have to beat everybody Aliens. up. Aliens. Um, and then they kind of talk about it. They're like, um, and this part was a little stupid. Like, like you know, so 910 territory, because they say, well, we gave them the tech. So what are you talking about? We gave him a tech. I didn't give him a tech. Well, here they collected the data f- from a telescope. They looked at one of our ships, super far away, and they somehow reverse engineer. I'm like, no, 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 no. no. You Stupid. cannot use a telescope to look at a warping Stupid. ship to make a warp bomb. <laughs> bomb. Fuck you. Fuck that. Uh, and it was an extra. And all telescope. you have to do is parts. just ride it to where, hey, you know, there was some destruction or some ship or whatever, and the tech and the tech fla- slammed to the planet's surface. Okay, fine, we're done. Super easy. We're good. But they anyways, have, no, the they didn't have the right? fucking tele, f- telescope. They're like, no, we're not giving up this tech. So eventually they take them and uh, t- take me to your leader. So they take it to the leader, says, we're not giving this up because they're fighting us and we're fighting them and this will help end the war. Um, it's the one with the bigger stick who wins. I loved it. <laughs> And yeah. yeah, he uses his diplomacy. He uses talking. And, uh, yeah, and he's like, screw General Order 1. Mm-hmm. This is the spirit of Trek. The spirit of Trek is maintain General Order 1. But screw it in a situation where it's the right fucking thing to do. And this is what it was the right fucking thing to do. So um, he tries to talk him down initially. She says, no, we choose blood. Yeah, and then they reveal the ship that the aliens already knew about. Pike uh, shows his big stick. Uh, well, no, but they're revealing it to the masses, and the, even the masses look, whoa, shit, we've never seen like but that. But the government already so knows what happened. Yes, but, they're, but they keep it away from the people. The point was for it to be public, because what would happen on Earth if aliens started to show up? Riots. People would put their fucking differences Riots. aside and be like, I don't give a fuck that, you no, know, this person. No, they wouldn't. They go... Uh, <laughs> Stealing. You don't think the governments <laughs> would get together stealing. and go, holy I shit. disagree. I think we would feel more one as a people if, if I, I there just, are other aliens out there. And that's what happens here. They see yeah. that. They, they're like, all right, fine. We'll at least talk to you. I think the writers literally forgot that they shot fo- photon torpedoes at the ship earlier in the episode. That's the government doing it. Uh, not, it's not everybody in the fucking <laughs> universe and in the world. The average Joe didn't know that the photon torpedo. It's not average Joe with fire photon torpedoes. No, come on, Alex. Anyway, they would have literally seen photon torpedoes go in the No, atmosphere. they wouldn't have fucking seen photon torpedoes. Do you see every North Korean fucking missile that goes into the fucking air from your house, Alex? No. If anyway, because <laughs> North Korea is not over no, my house, God the ship it. is over them. So, they, what do you mean North Korea is not there? You don't know where the fucking ship is at. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. You don't know where the photon torpedoes uh, look, were. They? We They're not <laughs> winning on this. It is for the general fucking public. I, I, the government the looks government super was prized. keeping it under wraps. I, yeah, even from your general soldier. That's why the guy that was uh, holding Pike's arm was like, holy I shit, I've never forgot. seen anything like that before. I just, All right, well, anyways. Um, whoever has the biggest stick wins. Boom, they do that. The sides come together, but they still can't agree. Um, and, you know... Uh, they go a little bit, uh, they do take a little break from this to go talk about n- the new number one's Gorn tragic past. I hope they show the Gorn. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but I, the Gorn and this now. is when I realized this this scene was handled well. Like normally in Picard, they would write the backstory Ugh. and it would be so stupid. I'm like, I don't like this character. But they wrote it so well here. It's like, I like this character. Originally, I didn't like her. I like her. Uh, but I don't want her to be the replacement for number one. That's Rebecca's uh, uh, position. Is she like the security officer? She's a lieutenant. Yes, later on, she gets recruited onto the crew. I'm like, all right, I like her. Uh, Pike beams down and gives his speech. He says that you guys are like us. We had a second civil war. I wonder what that was over. What do you think Star Trek's lore thinks that second civil war is over? They said it was over the separation between progressives and conservatives, and then that led to the eugenics war and World War III. Okay, I think so, because they were showing things. This is a little dumb, a little on the nose. Uh, they had, like, 
Trump for like some audit or something because audit, audit the vote audit and the vote then that like led to the civil war like, which led no, to the eugenics that's not gonna war. Lead. Well, I don't know. Maybe if that shit keeps happening and Republicans are like, no, uh, we won every single uh, fucking vote, even if we don't have the votes to count. No, we won every fucking time. Eventually, people are gonna get sick of that and try to start a second war. I don't know. But in the Star Trek universe, eventually goes to a second civil war. Then it's the eugenics war. Then it ties into the Star Trek lore. That's where the eugenics war happens. And then eventually a third world war. Bunch of explosions. And this is sort of the history of Earth of Star Trek. And, um, you know, they do what I've always thought uh, that they should do in this situation. It's just show someone else, like, how, you know, what our history was. So don't repeat it, you know, uh, very directly. And a lot of the other Star Treks, it's it's like they don't reveal the entire Earth history. They say, look, we did this, and we don't want you to do it. But he was very direct with it. Captain this Pike is off his rocket. He's a fucking, I don't give a Billions shit. Died. I know when I'm dying. I know when I'm going to die. I'm not going to die. Ain't nobody going to kill me. I know when I die, and I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. So anyways, instead of going to war with each other, why don't you join our Federation? All right. And they said, cool. And they learn. They learn from that. I like it. Hope, whatever. Uh, and then they goes to Starfleet uh, to get court-martialed, but there's a loophole. Uh, they use a loophole um, because the event, uh, you know, the, it influenced, like the event shouldn't have happened and they shouldn't have seen the event happen or something like that. They explain it away. Yeah, they don't um, recognize the event as ever happening. They have to deny that it ever existed. But, but if you're going to do it like that and you're going to fucking scribble a give me some consequences. The consequences are the other side doubles down now and it's like, all right, we're not letting this happen again. You want to get away with this? Fine. We're calling this the prime directive from now on and nobody fucking better, you know, break it from here on. It gets broken. Yeah, in every the episode. <laughs> but <laughs> if you let TNG, if you but that's TNG, the show we like. Uh, they, they break it every episode. Anyways, um,. So then, you know, they, what do you, what do you, um, they, he talks with her a little bit more. They explain the domes. Uh, there's even sp uh, growth in space. And this is good writing, stuff I like. He offers her a commission on the ship. And he does star date logs. They didn't do that in Picard. I, I like the I like star date. That's nostalgic. Star, you know, I guess if Picard did it, it would be star date stupid. Every episode he did one of those, he just didn't press a button. Like, oh, <laughs> yes, like this reminds me. He's like <laughs> <laughs> There's like, nothing on this take. At Picard. the end, he's like, "Play that back." He's like, "You are recording." <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um, at the very end of the episode, Kirk shows up. Did I get that right? His dad. Oh, okay, that's okay, right. Okay, because science like, officer. Wait, that's Kirk, right. Yeah. Isn't he? The there's James T. Kirk, Kirk and then there's T. Stephen Kirk. Steve. Ah, that's yeah, a, that's right. Because it's like wait, it fucking uh, Steve. It was it, it, it was Steve. Steve. It was Chris Hemsworth, right? Um, uh, Spock is his boss. So I guess we'll get some of Kirk's dad. Uh, anyways, um, then we do the mission. You know, explore, seek out, you know, boldly go thing. So what do we do? It's great. We'll There's explore. excitement. I'm excited. There's excitement. And we get the classic bridge sound. <laughs> you, you might have even been hearing my phone notifications. That's the, uh, the comms bridge for, for Captain. Um, just a, honestly, like I said, a, a very good episode. Perfect episode. Well, I wouldn't call it perfect. I, I hope it, I hope some episodes hit higher than this. But this is Star Trek, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, very even much. some of the other ones that uh, they were teasing look mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Like yeah, blood trails and just the various places they went to. At the Exploration, end. mysteries, problem solving, uh, diplomacy, talking it out, and some fighting and some action. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, cool. Uh, something Star positive, Trek. very odd. First I feel very odd right now. Is good. We so can far. we can say that the first episode is good. Yes, the first episode. All righty, guys. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for watching. What did you think of this? And 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 really compare the, these two, and you can see a difference. If you love Star Trek Picard and you think that's so smart, I'm so curious what you think of this. They're like, no, this is garbage. <laughs> I bet. I'd be this interesting. Thing, I bet. Yeah. All right, guys. That's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.